Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Theros Beyond Death set review brought to you by <coughs> Enchanted Realms Games and Gifts. I'm John. I'm Marco. And uh, we're going to be diving into the green cards today, starting with Arasta. These names, they yeah. never stop. Arasta of the Endless Web. It's two mm. green green for a legendary enchantment creature, Spider. It's a 3-5 with reach. And then whenever your opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-2 Spider creature token with reach. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright. So, for one mana creature cheaper, you get a 3 5. Every time your opponent uh, does some stuff that they would like <coughs> to do, you get a 1 2. This, to, to me at least, this is very reminiscent to me of Ishkana Graft Widow. Of course. What are, you, what are you thinking? Uh, I guess they're two different cards, in my opinion. Uh -huh. I guess you that's the first place you could compare it. Is Ishkana. Um, Ishkana got some value when it came out, at least, right? Right. When it entered the battlefield, you, I think it's like if you Delirium. had Delirium, you got three one twos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This one um, needs a little bit of time to build up. But... Yeah, yeah. It's a little cheaper, though. Yeah. Um, they're the same uh, body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's just a little slower. It might be able to grind a little bit better than Ishkana. Um, in those type of decks, you typically didn't get like blink effects or return, you know, or. Uh -huh. Maybe not the right graveyard recursion in the set, uh -huh. but uh, nonetheless, I still think this is a fair card. Yeah. Um, it's not powerful, but just fair, and it got the insurance text in, or put in if it dies. You know, worst case scenario. Well, yeah, I assume if if they uh, kill it, because they know, have to like use it. Yeah, yeah. Use it yeah. Sorcery, you know. All right. <coughs> uh, next card we have is that card, but. Uh, we're not ready to talk about that card yet because I gotta line up the graphic again. Ah, Marco, would you like to talk to them about anything? <laughs> um, prayer release weekend. Um, yeah. It's five events for a hundred dollars at Enchanted Realm Games and Gifts. Yeah. Prize payout is amazing. You get food uh, on Saturday and Sunday. Eat at your own risk. Um, it's the best time to get your new cards. Trade gets what you need before the set drops. All right, so we fixed oh, it. Yeah, there we Congratulations go. to us. Please come uh, play one minute with us. <laughs> uh, next card is the Binding of the Titans. This is one and all green for a saga. Chapter one, each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Chapter two, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. For each creature card exiled this way, you gain one life. And then chapter oh. three, return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, when I got to chapter one... I was like, oh man, I don't know if I want to play this. You're going to set up your opponent with some of their escape creatures. Exactly. And then you get to get rid of some of their yeah. escape creatures mm -hmm. and you set yourself up. Yep. I think the symmetrical effect maybe keeps us from being played a whole, whole lot. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, I, 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 I agree with you there. Um, it just doesn't have a home currently right now on standard. Um, especially in the green colors. I don't know too many green decks I want to put this in there. Maybe for their polychronoses Poly that are coming out or your yeah yeah or your euros or stuff like that we'll get to those in our later videos <clears throat> maybe this slots in just because of that mm -hmm. but uh besides that in current standard right now we do not see hope for it okay do you, do you think this makes a deck by itself i i can uh with the right if escape is uh strong enough you know uh -huh. it is strong enough to be an archetype i agree Wow. You can make a deck, and if escape is very popular, and this could be you know something that can be a mirror breaker, perhaps, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh we're wait, still wait. messing up. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's gonna happen. I yeah, it says exile to two target creatures from graveyards. Damn, did it. So is that does that mean you have to hit their graveyard and your graveyard, or just theirs? Well, I think it would be hit. Yeah, I think it says because it says up to up to two right? target cards from graveyard. So I think you just get to like mix and match. Okay. So like you can only you can choose to only do their stuff. If oh, you want. see, that's even stronger. Yeah. A little bit made, Kate. Oh. Yeah. No, we're nice. not. We're not good today with green. Green deserves a little bit better. You're right. You're right. Give white all the love. Green, green, green deserves a nice smooth show. Yeah. Next card. Is Chainweb Arachnir. This is a single green for a creature spider. It's a one, two with reach. 
When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. Then it has escape three green green, exile four of the cards from your graveyard, and it escapes with three plus one plus one counters on it. So it's a one two, it hates on flyers, later in the game becomes a three four that hates on flyers. The bigger flyers. I was really hyped for um uh like a healer's hawk deck. Mm. Like going like healer's hawk into like a Johnny's Pride Mate. Mm. I feel like <laughs> this when this there is already Crowl Harpooner in the format, exactly. I don't think Healer's Hawk is going to get it. Yeah, this and the uh, into the Harpooner just yeah, hoses yeah. those decks, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Healer's Hawk and the other cheap uh, Fairy Godmother, mm -hmm. I think that's what, it, what it's called, this really punishes them early, you know? And yeah. you get a decent body out of it. And later on in the game, you get a better body out of it. Right. Uh, I see this scene playing sideboards and maybe main decks in our current standard. Yeah, I think what... what... The unfortunate thing about this card in particular is if this could put a 1-1 counter on Pell Collector, I think you have a very good, like, all yeah. right, these are my green one drops for a green aggro deck. Exactly. But because uh, Pell Collector only keys off of power as opposed to power or toughness, I, th I think this is going to have a hard time finding its way into main decks. Okay. okay. Fair enough. All right, here she is, oh my gosh. and she's now double green, like you said. I yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how this happens, dude. Like, mm. all right, okay, Destiny Spinner. It is one in a green for a two-three enchantment creature, human creatures and enchantment spells you control can't be countered, and then three of a green target land you control becomes an XX. Elemental creature with trample and haste control end of turn. God, yeah, it's trample. <laughs> X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. This is a I, this is great main deck sideboard standard pioneer. I don't know about I bottom, think, but I think this is gonna be the, one of like the sneaky reasons why the green white enchantress deck mm -hmm. is gonna be good in standard. Okay, I can I can see that. Because now like you just make your entire deck like you can't spell the counter spells. Mm -hmm. And now you you have a good blocker, and you have a good mana sink. <laughs> yeah. Good mana sink, good blocker. It's efficient. It does everything perfect, and it's not legendary. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, this could have been one of the demigods, and people would have been totally okay with that. Mm -hmm. But now we get this and a demigod in green. I feel like that's a little too powerful. Um, do they go together? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I, I, we'll see. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, this card seems yeah, very cool. powerful. Like, he, even just even if you get rid of like the enchantment part, like I think he would still play this just for oh, a two three course, that yeah. like he has a good mana sink in it. I'm doing it. We're doing the thing. I'm a very I'm a very good computer guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my god, green. We have Dryad of the Elysian Grove. This is two and a green for an enchantment creature nymph. It is a two four that says you may play an additional land on each of your turns, and then lands you control are every basic yeah. land type in addition to their other types. So just on stats, just on typing, seems like a nod to Corsair Crufix. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of doing a different thing than Corsair Crufix, yeah. where the card advantage is coming from playing lands quickly, mm -hmm. instead of always making sure you hit your land draw. And I think that means that this goes in a different type of deck. Yeah, of course. Uh, they're two different things. Um... I where I, I automatically see this where everybody else automatically sees it sees this is it, they, they they want to play around with this card in modern uh -huh. um and um uh, so like uh, like tide, tide, uh, yeah tide shift um okay. because you have a uh, omen what what's card name prismatic omen yeah prismatic omen and then you have Azusa too Azusa of course way more powerful. Uh -huh. So we're trying to figure out where to slot this guy in. Uh -huh. You know, it dodges some of the best uh, removal in the form of that. It yep, cannot, push. cannot be bolted. Yeah, and it cannot be bolted. Oh. Um, I, it, it's definitely really exciting for modern. For standard, it has to find a home. Maybe the uh, green white enchant enchantress deck, right? Uh -huh. yeah. Is that what you call him? Enchantress deck. Uh, definitely sees him as a very powerful creature. Um, I love it. 2-4. Very efficient, not legendary again. I'm yeah. thankful for that. Um, Do you think this goes in the same deck as Corsair Perfix? Oh, God. Because they key yeah. off each other really well. Right? <laughs> yeah, of course they do. Yeah, you uh, play two lands on top of Corsair. Sometimes you're a little bummed out mm -hmm. that you're drawing that card instead of playing it that turn. 
And yeah, I, I can definitely see them if they're both the three chops slots in those kind of decks. I like it a lot. And they're enchantments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just not looking forward to like in the standard where they're like, my opponent goes like, alright, I'm going to play an Arboreal Grazer on one. <laughs> and then on two, they're going to play this. Play another land, play another Arboreal Grazer. Like, they're empty handed, yeah. but it's turn three and they have yeah, five lands. And, and it's insane. And as soon as they find a Nissa, and then they just have to find a threat after that, you know? And that's the, and that's the other interesting thing about this, too, is that now Nissa, Nissa Forest suddenly tapped for a bunch of colors. Jesus, my lord. And, and does it stack like that, or there's more out, or... Uh, so, I think... All right, so feel free to edit in a video yeah, yeah. where Donovan says I'm wrong or something. But the way comment I see below. That, yeah, yeah, please, comment below. Yeah, yeah, but the way good, so. I think this is going to work is if you have this and you have a Nissa. Your forests can tap for any color, and then whatever color they tap for, they also make a green. God, my lord. Okay, okay, I see that. It's a lot of power here in Arena Standard. Mm -hmm. So I think I don't think um, that last card is gonna like spin off many new archetypes. I think I think this is gonna make a new guy. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, going on to our next card, we have the first Aroan Games. Two and a green for a saga. Chapter one, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Chapter two, put three 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control. Chapter three, if you control a creature of power four or greater, draw two cards. Chapter four, create a gold token. Gold token? Um, I believe those are just sacrifice sad one man of any color. Uh, they had them in the... Uh, you would know. Yeah, the original Theros. <clears throat> So if you don't know what that is, we can, uh, what's the time at, John? Uh, you ask, uh, well, for uh, the video. Oh, for the video? Aw, oh, shucks. Yeah, maybe Jason could edit um, in a uh, gold token. Yeah. If not, we're okay. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it just, just yeah. Imagine, imagine, like, treasure tokens. Yeah, treasure tokens, if you're familiar with uh, current standard. Mm -hmm. um, treasure tokens is definitely something that, um, this is basically a treasure token. Yeah. Uh, this card looks great. Um, maybe not great. Uh, it's for it's doing everything you know together, you know. See, all I have to do is I curse my lips a little bit, and then Marco completely <laughs> reevaluates the card. <laughs> I, I I feel like an idiot, so I have to rewind real quick. Oh, maybe it's just okay. I mean, you get your one one, you make it into a four four, you draw two cards. Uh, maybe and that's enough to make it de decent. I I think. If this card is going to be successful, it'll be in like a green stompy deck, where you know you're not you don't really you care less about the one one and you care about more like all right I'm going to make my love struck beast an eight eight and I'm going to attack yeah. with that. Fair enough, yeah. Um, this thing was very powerful. Yeah, yeah. I think this the last chapter I think is a little underwhelming. Yeah, yeah. The last the rest chapter of is very game. confusing to this card. Yeah. It seems especially for four turns being on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. that you should get a little bit more out of it, but, you know, it's yeah. something. I guess, like, it just tells the story of, like, some schmuck who, like... Grew into... Someone that got a piece of gold? Yeah, well, like, <laughs> so, like, it, he, like, he, like, trained really hard, yeah. and then he got recognized for training really hard, and then he got the gold medal. Okay, okay, there you go, yeah, yeah. that's me now. Yeah, all right. All right, so next, card, next card we have after that is Gift of Strength. It's one in green for an instant. Target creature gains plus three, plus three, and gains reach until end of turn. Reach a tiny bit relevant here. Usually you don't see these bone cards in the standard. Yeah, I think, like, um, yeah, you got you got reach. Like, if you yeah. want to pay a little extra for your giant growth to, like, get a little Yeah, a little just stick extra. with giant growth. Yeah. Next card we have is Hydra's Growth. This is two and a green for an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature, when it's Hydra's Growth enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on enchanted creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on enchanted creature. Mm. That's that's a little bit interesting, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think it busts open board states and limited. Uh, I don't think it does a whole lot in standard. Yeah, definitely not a whole lot in standard. Mm -hmm. Don't two for, two for one yourself. Yeah. Be better than that. Unless there's a Boggles deck. In which case, then this seems pretty powerful. Nuts. Yeah. Next card is Hyrax Tower Scout. With the two and a green for a human scout, 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, untap target creature. No thanks to you. Hard pass. <coughs> All right. 
Next card we have is Elysium Caryatid. It is one in a green for a 1 1 plant. You can tap it to add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power four or greater, add two mana of any one color instead. Um, so, I feel like the thing holding this card back is it's a 1 1. Yeah. Um, Obvious reference to Sylvan Caryatid. Mm -hmm. I think I would take Sylvan Caryatid basically any, every time. Any day of the week over this. I know. think if this makes it in standard, it's just because. This is two mana acceleration, mm -hmm. and it's Cur uh, currently we have the uh, elemental if you control four creatures. We have yeah. that, and then we also have paradise here. Okay, yeah, and yeah, we have a watered down uh, giant. Yeah. yeah, stay away from this. Yeah, yeah. Next card is Inspire Awe. Three to green for an instant. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt except. Uh, so. combat damage that will be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. Scry 2. So this is a lot for a fog, but yeah. it feels like if you're in that deck, like, maybe this is a block? Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, the, the key word except here uh, can make um, this card really devastating sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, like you said, it needs to be in that specific deck. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, then you are not playing this card. Yeah. Okay. After that, we have Clothis's Design. Five and a green for sorcery. Creatures you control get plus S, X plus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green. So kind of like a super aspect of Hydra. Yeah, it's it's insane. It's too much mana. I don't think green decks typically want this. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're going big, that big with your mana and those green decks, you're not having too many creatures. Yeah. And it doesn't give it any evasion like trample or... Plane or menace and stuff like that. Too expensive. Yeah. After that, we have Lilson Chimera. Two to green for a creature Chimera. Four one. Uh, it escapes four to green. Exile three other cards from your graveyard, and it escapes the plus one plus one counter on it. I think this is just a little not tough enough. Yeah, exactly. It just doesn't get the guy. All right. Next card is Mantle of the Wolf. Three to green for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus four plus four. When Mantle of the Wolf is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create two, two, two green wolf creature tokens. Um, now, okay, so here's the thing that I like about this. I think if you get to put it, if you get it to resolve, mm -hmm. and you're not, it doesn't, the creature doesn't get killed when it's on the stack, you kind of get your mana back if your creature mm -hmm. doesn't exactly. get killed. Um, I think if you get blown out in response to casting this, I think it's a giant blowout just because yeah. of the mana you put into it. Yeah. You usually set yourself up for these two for ones, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not what you want to be doing. Um, agree with you there. If it revolves or resolves, you get your mana back uh -huh. out of it. Um, but maybe this go I out of the the aura enchantments in the set. Uh -huh. I feel like this is one of the stronger ones. Yeah. And if you have the two three out, maybe. It can't be countered. You get uh -huh. a little bit, you know, um, something out of it, and then when your stuff, your board gets wiped, mm -hmm. insurance. But besides that, on the fence. Yeah. After that, we have Moss Viper. It is a single green for a one one death. Uh, nothing. Yeah, hard pass. After that, we have Mystic Repeal, single green for an instant. Put target creature on the bottom of its owner's library. This is powerful. You know? I. I agree that it's mm. powerful. I, I also think it's a little narrow. Yeah, it, it's extremely narrow, but it deals with the guy. It, it, it's extremely narrow, mm -hmm. but maybe if you're playing green, you can see one or two slots of this in your sideboard card. Okay. Sideboard, uh, just in case uh, the gods run around it in, uh, there, in New Theros Standard. Okay, I can see that. After that, we have Nessian Boar. It is three green green for a boar. That's a 10-6. All creatures able to block Nessian Boar do so. Whenever Nessian Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. I can't evaluate this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, I, li I like me some uh, big dumb creatures, uh, but the fact that you're basically almost board wiping your opponent with mm -hmm. ten power um, is kind of a setback that you get to that they get to draw a card. Uh, let's see. Can be blocked by a creature. That creature's controller draws a card, so it seems like they're refilling their hand for a board wipe. And is that good enough to set up for a win? Or I mean, when we've seen these kind of like, because there, there used to be like small elves that would have this effect, or 
mm -hmm. and all three kids like and like that's how you got through board solve. I feel like on this, this is almost a wrath. Just if you get to swing with it, just because at ten power, that's probably gonna take yeah, out. Yeah, it's gonna kill the board. Yeah. But then reloading the hand is that worth it, or is it, or do they only draw one card? I'm not, either way. I'm not sure if it's worth it. To be yeah, honest. yeah. I, I, I don't like this card too much. Uh, I wish it could survive. Maybe bump it up to like. Maybe if it was like a six ten. Yeah, maybe if it was a six ten, or maybe if you did like five solid green for devotion out of ten ten. Uh huh. I think that would be a little fair. You know, mm -hmm. get your devotion out of it, but it's hard to analyze. I can't tell you if this card's good or bad yet. Yeah. All right. After that, we have Nessian Horn Beetle, one and a green for a creature insect. It is a two two, and it says at the beginning of combat on your turn, it controls another creature's power four or greater. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Nessian Horn Beetle. Uh, a little slow. Um, yeah. I think the thing I like about this is that like it curves reasonably well. Like if you play like this on two and then you play Love Struck Beast on oh, three, yeah, exactly. like this becomes a three three on attacks. Mm -hmm. Um maybe that just is good enough. It fits into those types of decks. If if you can set that up reliably, I think it might be good enough. Or maybe uh uh mono green with the uh, Yorvo too. Yorvo mm -hmm. comes out on three as well and curves into that. Yeah, so, that too, that too. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a little thing going on. All right, after that, we have Nessian Wanderer, one of the green for a creature satyr scout. It is a 1 3, and it says whenever an enchantment creep enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So just make sure it hits your land drops. Mm. I think outside from that, that's not. Not too exciting. Um, it's a limited bomb mm -hmm. for sure, but besides that, uh... A really needs a, a home and standard to always be triggering your constellation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a satyr. It might fit into the satyr tribe deck, but I don't know if satyrs play that many enchantments. Right. Um, decent card. Maybe something to keep a lookout for, keep your play set up. They are uncommon, so... Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, after that we have <laughs> Nexus Warden. Two and a green for creature satyr archer. It is a one four with reach, and it has yeah. constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life. Now, if you couldn't tell by the two three for two that we saw, or the two four for three that fixes your lands and uh, lets you play extra lands, I don't think on the ground aggro decks are going to have a whole lot of success with those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got some big butts going on and. Yeah. This light game might just be a sideboard card for those types of decks with enchantments. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it looks very underpowered, the face of it. But as John was saying, you know, it doesn't seem like aggro decks can get really get through. Mm -hmm. And they give it a little bit uh, of a, uh, a little bit more than what he has with the uh, reach on him as right. well. Yeah. This card's solid, you know? Not yeah. great, but solid. This is going to be the card where, you know, I, I sit down with my mono white aggro deck, and Marco sits down with his mono green aggro uh, mid range deck. And I just walk away from the game after having lost O2. I say, why the heck did, he heck did I lose? And somebody will walk up to me and say, oh, well, John, it's because they played a Nexus Warden that you couldn't answer. He just couldn't get through. Yep. He gained some life, too. He gained 10 life and killed three of your creatures in blocks. <laughs> All right. Next card that we have after that Ooh. Nylea Kenai. It is three to green for a legendary enchantment creature god. It is a five six with indestructible. As long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylea isn't a creature. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. And then you pay two to green, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it in your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. Oh, put it in your graveyard. What do you think? Uh, that 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 part of the card just made me a little bit more interested. Um the ability is a little bit reminiscent of um, Tireless Tracker mm -hmm. that uh, was in past formats <clears throat> and now is a modern all star and uh, devoted company decks. Mm -hmm. um, three mana is uh, quite a bit. I feel like you really want to be in some type of creature deck for this uh, to make the reduction even better. Uh, let's say you're in mono green. Maybe this slots right into there and you play more of a bigger mono green list mm -hmm. with Nissa. That way you can get, you know. A lot of bang for your buck. Yeah. Um, 
Because at that point, you're only paying two mana to right. search for a creature. And then you can fill your graveyard up with any type of like, escape creatures yeah. as well. So um, if there's a deck for it, it's powerful. Uh, besides that, maybe it takes a little bit time to find a home in standard. Yeah, I feel like green has so much right now that this might not actually make the cut. Yeah, exactly. And if it like maybe just makes it in sideboards for now. Okay, yeah, I can see it in sideboards. Run against control. Yeah. Next card we have is Nylea's Forerunner. It's an enchantment creature beast. It is a 5 3 trample. Other creatures you control have trample. Yeah. Kind of poop. Yeah. Next card is Nylea's Huntmaster. 3 and a green for a 4 3 Centaur Shaman. When it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green. Yeah. Oh, limited, right? Limited. <laughs> I like this is maybe most interesting if you put it on like a big trampler or yeah. just like weirdly enough a it, flyer. Yeah, some kind of combo deck. Your Gilded Goose gets in there. Your big trample guy gets in there and mm -hmm. he just cheats people out. But I don't think you're gonna be doing that this often in uh, the standard. Yeah, I don't think so either. All right, Nylea's intervention. X green green for sorcery. You may choose one, search your library for up to X land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your library. Or Nylea's intervention deals twice X damage to each creature with flying. Man, every, uh, every time I see a new card, my healer's hot stuff just gets worse. And worse. <laughs> yeah, they're just not. When you have your flyers, man. Um, I think, I think this card is a little difficult to evaluate because I don't know, like. I'm not I'm not very good at playing green decks, so I don't know if like four mana uh get two lands of just any land you want. Yeah, like, that's that's what makes this card powerful. Uh-huh. Uh that it's any land. Right. Um and currently in our standard we don't have two crazy lands. And the second ability is definitely it may be more of a sideboard ability. Yeah. Um <coughs> I am not a great commander player by any means or stretch of the means. Um, but this slots it great into commander. Mm -hmm. um, they have your powerful guys, cradles, uh, I don't know, you know? Yeah. Powerful lands like that throughout Magic's history. And if you're a green stage, you definitely want this for commander. Pick it up before it uh, spikes, and maybe it doesn't spike, but it's a cheap investment. Yeah. You think this gets anywhere in Pioneer? Ooh. What what crazy lands do we have in Pioneer, John? We have Nykthos. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do have Nykthos. I guess you could find your much-needed lands. Like, let's say you need a Nykthos on your turn just to go off the next turn. Mm -hmm. For three mana, that seems pretty fair, you know? Yeah. And uh, what about any flying threats in Pioneer right now? Well, Glorybringer's kind of the big one. Okay. I mean, maybe green decks have I a think... hard time dealing with that. Yeah, I mean, six mana, like, yeah. kill all your <laughs> opponent's Glorybringers. Like, maybe that's a little too much, but... Yeah. You know, if there's like, like if there's like a spirits deck where it's just like a bunch of X ones and X twos, and then this just gets to be a wrath. Like, okay, yeah. I like that. Maybe oh, yeah. a pioneer potential. Yeah. All right. Next card is Nyx Herald, two and a green for a two three enchantment creature, Centaur Shaman. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus one plus one, gains trample until end of turn. I think this effect and I think this body is a little small for three. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh. Here's the one everybody wants to talk about. Yeah. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Four green, green, green for an enchantment creature elemental. It is a 5-5 five, five with trample. And it says if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. Disgusting. So the top of the format is like, what, seven mana? Right? Uh, like, right. I don't think there's too much... More going on standard, but no, besides, like, uh, of course not there. Yeah, so oh, I feel like your, uh, the guy that steals stuff, the blue dude. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, agent of treachery. You yeah, know? yeah, people yeah, are yeah. comfortable playing that at seven. Uh -huh. And I, I hate going back for this for green. Maybe that's the next card that gets banned for standard because it's just <laughs> you got a lot of powerful cards. You put this in your Nessa deck, and you're playing this on three. You're playing this right on. Right. With no problem, right? And then your, I think your Hydrate Racist just like draws, <laughs> like you draw all the cards in your deck and then you draw all the cards in your deck. Like, do I, you, do I you want to keep playing? I, I'm sorry. Let me cheese you out real quick. Yeah. I don't know if this finds a home in standard, though. 
there's definitely a lot of more powerful cards and this it seems yeah. like a very win more card uh-huh uh, for those types of decks uh it, it's great the body is amazing you get five five with trample so you know it's not one of those uh where they water down the creature just because it has a strong ability um here's the thing that scares me i think like six months ago i would have said no there's no way this card's as well oh i no. think now with how pervasive nissa decks have become mm-hmm. i don't think this would see play but if it does nissa into this is just gonna be absurd. it's gonna be crazy your hydro crisis you're gonna you're gonna sculpt perfect cam most of the time mm-hmm. let's say you're gonna draw like 10 12 15 cards you know yeah to turn after because i'm pretty sure when nissa out you're gonna be tapping for four mana five mana i don't i don't quote me comment below to tell us how this mechanic works with uh, nissa and it's not a legendary creature, so you can get multiples of them out. Let's say you have mana up with uh, Nissa, right? Mm-hmm. You play Nissa, play this next turn, untap, play this for free, basically. Yeah. And if you have two of them in your hand. Um, it's a it's an insane card for Commander. Um, a lot of uh, Commander players I know say that it might get banned. So if it's crazy expensive, I do not recommend you picking that up on release or the pre-release. Um. Wait until it goes down just a tiny bit to pick them up, but definitely if you're a green sage, you want this for commander. It is insane. It slots into a lot of stuff. Bring some zenith it up. Uh, it, it, yeah, all that stuff, you know. Green. Every green mage right now is just really good at making like ten mana and turn four or whatever. Like you'll figure it out. Yeah, hey, we we got it. All right, here's a way less impressive green card. Way Next less. Colossus, three green, green, green. We're an enchantment creature giant vanilla six seven nothing. Hard pass. I've been playing for two. Alright, next card after that is Omen of the Hunt. Two and a green for an enchantment flash. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Then you can make two and a green. Sacrifice Omen of the Hunt Scry Team. Uh, very very disappointing for uh part of the omen cycle. I don't think we have to go much over this. I think the interesting thing about this is that this is a three mana one ramp spell with flash mm-hmm. and that is shown oh see look at me now i gotta now i look like an idiot john he should have led the way and you thought it was good yeah. ah. <laughs> um it's a ramp spell with flash that gives you a little bit of value later in the game and three mana ramp spells have shown to be playable not only in this format but also in pioneer i don't know if this takes any slots from like Nissa's pilgrimage and the ramp deck gotcha. but this is just another option where if you need value out of your ramp spell this gives it to you. Of course, gotcha. Oh, yeah, you did. There it. We go. All right, here's another six mana four four vanilla. Or is this vanilla? No. Yeah. Uh, Ferris Band Brawler four green green for four four centaur warrior. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature. You draw me vanilla. Yeah, vanilla. <laughs> What's vanilla? Way better flavor. I do. I do like these things. What's your favorite kind of ice cream? Okay. What's my favorite kind of coffee? French vanilla? Yeah, oh, yeah, French vanilla, hardcore. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm down with the vanilla latte. You and I should get Starbucks. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I thought we were talking about stuff. Because <laughs> right, we're trying to fix the screen! Yeah, yeah, I'm just over here being weird. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, plummy, you already know plummy. what it does. Yeah. For those of you who don't, really quick, one in the green, instant, destroy target creature, flying, kill them flyers. Next card is Relentless Ooh. Pursuit, two in a green for sorcery. Reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature card and, and, and. or a land <laughs> card from among them into your life into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. All right. So right. there was a time, and this might this might be before our time. Okay. Where like blue had the best cantrips. Right. Blue don't have the best cantrips no more. No, by no it's means, green. especially for standard. This seems a little absurd. So this is um, two mana in a green or three mana in a green deck. Draw two of your best top four. Yeah, it, like ninety percent of the time you're going to be making this a divination, right? But it's like better than divination because you got to you pick get what you got. Four, you get scrub four, <laughs> and you put in extra stuff in the graveyard, yeah. which means either putting escape spells in your graveyard or putting just putting fuel for yeah. escape into your graveyard. God. Creature and or land. Okay, so at least it's not like take two creature cards and take two land cards because that would be yeah. Busted. But like, even then, this yeah, is very good. Yeah. Powerful. Okay, 
Next card we have is Renata, Call to the Hunt. Two green green for a legendary enchantment creature demigod. It is a star three. Oh, a demigod Power one. is equal to your devotion to green, and then each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter. I, I, I typically like cards like this. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's the brewer in me, but I like a card where you're gaining a lot of value out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it's giving more value to your creatures. You got uh, decks with... Um, Yorvo? You got Yorvo, but where's, what's the uh, green... Wait, hold on. Okay, uh, what's a red green goblin from uh, Grumgully? Got some like that. Yeah, that's not playable. Uh, there is the two drop with Riot. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. And um, there's uh, Rhythm of the Wild mm, that yeah, kind of yeah. gave it the same effect and stuff like that, you know? Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, this on poor mana, though, you know, giving other stuff going wider, going bigger. And you got the great hands in the format, and you know, yeah. maybe you're going insane with the green. Yeah, I I think this is a little expensive for standard, but I think it's like just too expensive. I think at three mana, this is a very powerful card. Yeah. I think at four, this is still reasonable, but maybe doesn't make the cut in the gotcha. other deck. Maybe a one or two copy of. Yeah, maybe one or two. Okay, next card is Return to Nature. It's one in green for an instant. Uh, choose one, destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. I think that last clause is going to be very important. For this yeah, one. exactly. Good thing they gave us a good reprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about your favorite flavor of pizza. Pepperoni. Very generic guy. Yeah. Extra cheese, extra sauce. Give me my money's worth. Yeah, you know who's not generic? This guy. Oh! Set us in champion. Indeed. Two and a green for a 1-3 human warrior. As Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Citizen Champion and draw a card. It's uh, it's pretty... It's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, um, that card can go get beat. Yeah, we were talking about this in our <coughs> videos, maybe just a Selesnia Bogolish deck or Heroic deck and stuff like that. And this is exactly what you needed. You need that card draw out of it. Um, you know... Enchantresses have seen fair play in Magic's history. You know, they have decks on Legacy, and, you know, they're very fun. The, the thing that's kind of, um, you, you're a lot smarter than me. Uh, I mean, if you're just going to say so. <laughs> uh, medismal? Is that the word? Medismal? Something like that? Like disappointing, I guess? Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll, oh, my phone could tell me what it is. Um, you, you're not, you're not, you're not in on this card? It's, I love it. I love okay. this card a lot. Um, previous enchantresses, you know, once you're done with them, or let's say you run out of gas with them, okay. they're usually they're usually just oh, they right. have very small bodies. They're useless. This one though, you're getting a lot of card advantage out of it, and you're growing a monster too, the biggest mm -hmm. threat on the board. Yeah. So, I think one of the strongest cards, or one of the strongest aspects of this card might actually end up being that this is not an enchantment. Mm -hmm. So when your opponent is trying to answer your engine card mm -hmm. and then also answer the enchantments that you're using to fuel this engine, they have to be different cards. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So this card seems very good. Probably goes in green, white, enchantress, or just anything you're playing a bunch of enchantments. Mm -hmm. Once again, green gets a silly amount of card advantage. Uh, I don't know Everybody. what's going on with green. Green has seemed like the best one we've seen so far. Yeah. Oh, all right, John. Uh, you still read it. You're a better reader than I am. Thank but you. this card is amazing. Okay. And it's just, okay. Go all right. Set a, set a test and petitioner. One green, green for 2-2 two, two human druid. When it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to your devotion to green. Now, if I remember correctly, there was like a, it was a card like Knightly as Disciple yep, or something. Exactly. It was a 3-3 three, three for Four with this exact effect. Exactly. I'm just so happy you get this for three mana. Uh, you, it's still double green, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. And um, a pioneer, some pioneer lists are running them in the sideboards if you're big green devotion, maybe stomp you per se. But <laughs> if you just got with that race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just you get a strict upgrade from Nile as disciple, and I'm glad to see it come back into the format. Uh, this is a sideboard all star for mono green devotion decks. If they make a thing in standard, they are currently a maybe in pioneer. Stop banning us and hating on us wizards. 
So we can put these in our sideboards and be happy at three mana instead of four. I just I just want my healer's hawk deck to be good. <laughs> and it, like I said, every preview I've seen so far it just looks worse and like, worse and worse. You cannot. Okay. You've hit me for six, seven, eight. It's cool. Uh, I'm going to get it all ten. back. <laughs> All right, next card we have is Satessin Skirmisher. One in a green for a 2-1 human warrior. That's Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. I think this card is very interesting if it's a plus one, plus one counter. Yeah, I exactly. I think as a temporary bump, this is kind of a pass. Yeah, unplayable. It'd be a rare, right? And some of the two drop to groves? Yeah, it, it would be a rare. It would be called Satessin Warrior. <laughs> Next card we have is Satessin Training. Boy, Satessin is going nuts on green. Uh, one in a green for an enchantment aura. Chant creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Chant creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. Uh, this is interesting because it cantrips. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Outside that's, of that, but... that's what's good about it. It, it cantrips, and you get the trample ability out of it. Yeah. Better, one of the better ones out of... Uh, if you got two for one yourself, this is where you want to play. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh -oh. Gotta fill, got fill that We're board. Not good. All right, next card is Skola Grove Dancer. Mm -hmm. One in green for a 2 2 enchantment creature, Seder Druid. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain one life. And then you can pay two in a green, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Mm, it, it seems very bad on the front of the card. But these types of cards usually find some kind of home in a combo deck or something going on like that. There's nothing like that going on with standard. Yeah, I think um, the only interactions that I can think of at least are like Lotus Bloom and then Fatal Passage. Yeah, exactly. Those are currently the only things we're doing right now. Yeah. Twiddle Storm players, tell us below if this might go in your sideboard against an aggressive deck, you know, so you just survive a little bit longer. Um, but besides that, we don't see a home for it. Nope. Oh my gosh. I, am I don't even know so how bad Storm these green works. Like, I, I just, just, just kind of just die. I, I'm like, all right, you did your thing. I should have been paying attention. Yeah, like, they killed me on, like, turn four. And, really? like, they, like, they explained it, and I wasn't listening. And <laughs> right? I just, like, you just, got, like, you hey, don't want to listen to it, right? Yeah? I just, like, uh, okay, if you promise. <laughs> and that was it. All right, next card is Voracious Typh Typhon. Typhon. Two green green for Creature Snake Beast. It is a 4-4. Has escape green green, exile four other cards from your graveyard, escapes with three plus one plus one counters. So, reasonably efficient for what it's doing. Not I think just being efficient isn't enough. Fair enough. Next card is War Briar Blessing, one in a green. Enchant creature you control. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, enchanted creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Enchanted creature gets plus zero plus two. Eh, I, I gotta say, <laughs> if, you know, the uncountable thing becomes a thing, you sit up something, but I don't feel like that's where you want to be. We have uh, Lily's, Lily's, what is it called? Lil Liliana's Defeat? No, not that. But it's two mana, sack a creature. Yeah. If you control a Liliana, make a, or your opponent discards a card. Yeah. We have Ingrass Rampage. We have a lot of things that make you sack creatures. Mm -hmm. And if you're all loading on one creature, I don't think this is a format to do that. I mean, especially with board wipes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the, 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 this this could potentially be a cyborg card just because it's a two mana fight spell. Yeah, exactly. You get removal in your deck that's not interactive. Yeah, and it's your creature gets a little more toughness, so it's more likely to survive the fight. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that matters. I was a little time interested in it, but I, it, it's not a deck. Yeah. All right, next card. Wolf Willow Haven. One in a green for an enchantment aura. Enchant land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional green. And you can pay four in a green, sacrifice it, or sacrifice Wolf Willow Haven, create a 2 2 green wolf creature token, activate this ability only during your turn. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about this? Isn't this kind of like. Uh... I think this card is immensely powerful. Really? Yes. Okay. I think the reason for that is that this is two mana ramp that mm -hmm. isn't a creature, mm -hmm. so it's very hard to interact with. Yep. This is basically the closest we've gotten to Rank of Growth in a long time. Okay, I, I can see that. Uh, what's the uh, one mana. 
spell and, or one mana enchantment in modern right now. Uh, I, uh, Ponza plays it. Uh, Utopia Sprawl? Utopia Sprawl. But does Utopia Sprawl make any color? It, do, it does make any color. This, uh, this does only make green, so it's not fixing your yeah. mana. And you don't have to put this on the forest. So. Right. Yeah, so I agree with you, John. I like it. Now that you explain it a little bit more, I can see the power behind it. I think the sacrifice ability is like basically irrelevant because if you're a ram deck and the best thing you could do is like make a two two, you're like you're probably yeah, losing. You're, you're losing at that point. Yeah, but mm -hmm. just being just being just a ram is some a little good. extra insurance too. Yeah. Is that only in sorcery? What's up? It's only during your turn. Yeah. I was about to say maybe you get a sneak of blocker in there. All right, it looks like that's it for the green cards. Um, power, I, I John. Don't I don't know, man. It's nothing but power yeah, from it's, green. Yeah, it's, it's nothing but power. Yeah, it's there are a insane. couple of duds, but it looks like all the ability blocks are yeah. just actually powerful. Uh, I, like I don't know if you spec fought on uh, healer socks like I did, but um, <laughs> I would maybe try to return them if you can. Yeah. Get them in now. <laughs> so that'll do it for the green cards. We're going to take a little break, and then we will be going to our last video, which will be multicolored spells, artifacts, and lands. So Woo! Alright. I like it. it. Yeah, it's hot as shit. Yeah, I cannot believe I got so hot. You got some titty sweat going on. <laughs> yeah, fuck this. Yeah, yeah. Let's get some soft, bro. Oh. Just as a preview to that one shit from Wilson Dog Review, like, I think the new Fifu Lion was like, how do I get a fan now?
Oh my god. Oh, so hot. Alright. So I'm going to stop this video for a moment and then start a new one so we have a small.